Here at ONS 2010 in San Diego, California, we're now joined by Colleen Bass, palliative care nurse at the Christ Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Okay, so you've done some work on a study uh, in chemo-induced oral mucositis. What is the reason you chose this particular aspect? Well, my colleague Jennifer Hester is the advanced practice nurse at University Hospital at the time, and she and Dr. Kyra Whitmer at the University of Cincinnati, they looked at the different uh, side effects that chemotherapy has on uh, oncology patients. And one of the most debilitating things that can happen is um, people get mouth sores, oral mucositis. And so there are guidelines that talk about how to take care of your mouth, good oral care, but nothing specific. Um, you know, brush your teeth, use bland rinses, but nothing specific about how many times to brush or how often to rinse or specifically what kind of rinses. So Jennifer thought that it would be good to test using evidence-based practice some sort of a specific protocol. And so she went about setting up a protocol that we could test using two different groups of people. So we had one group of people that we brought through and we simply just talked to them about um, how did they feel they could manage their mouth care, how did they feel their mouth pain was at the time, and the second group of people we actually did a nursing intervention so we taught them a specific protocol and the protocol was they needed to uh, brush their teeth twice a day at least, rinse with a saline rinse two to three times a day, um, and uh, we taught them how to make a saline rinse. So we gave them a kit, we gave them a water pitcher and a little thing of salt and a spoon, taught them how to make the saline rinse. We put the instructions for the protocol on the side and gave them a toothbrush and sort of specifically taught them how to do that intervention. Um, so to prevent mouth sores, brush twice a day, uh, rinse with this saline rinse and floss stay away from spicy foods or things that can damage the mucosa. And then if they have a mouth sore, then they need to do the same thing every two hours while they're awake and every four hours at night. And so that's sort of how we went through testing um, out the protocol, a specific set of guidelines that, that people could follow um, using evidence-based practice to see what we could find out. What methods did you use to do the study? Well, what, what Jennifer and Kyra felt is that nurses, bedside nurses, needed a specific set, a specific protocol that they could follow. Um, everybody knows to take good care of their mouth, but what does that mean for a cancer patient? What does that mean for a patient on chemotherapy? And because oral mucositis can really affect patients, they, it can compromise them nutritionally. Um, they may have difficulty communicating if they have mouth sores. Um, they have higher infection rates sometimes as well. So going through something specific and testing it to see if this particular protocol was effective um, would do two things. One, it would tell us if having a specific set of steps that patients could do and that bedside nurses could explain, teach patients to do, if that would be effective in helping the mouth sores, keeping people's weight up, being able to still eat if that would be effective and that perhaps this could set um, some research out there that people could build on later for looking at other kinds of protocols for patients that are on cancer therapy. So that was the, the impetus for setting up the specific methods, um, which I mentioned, and also for um, why doing some type of evidence-based research would help researchers in the future have something to build upon, some information. What are some of the major findings that you got from doing the study? Well, what we found was that um, we had some significance between the groups on the kind of mouth pain they had. The, the group that did usual care had significantly more mouth pain than the group that did this specific protocol. We also found that the patients who, in, in the oral care protocol, who did the specific um, rinse, they had less mouth sores and less pain. Um, we also found that they were able to eat, um, which was a big thing for them. 
and some of the patients that we talked with said when we first taught them they they weren't sure you know well rinsing I don't really care for salt water but the mix that we did was one teaspoon for a quart of water and it's not too salty a lot of times when people do that oral rinse kind of thing it's too salty and patients won't continue it but this was mild enough that they were able to continue and patients came back and said that was really pretty easy it was no trouble they found that keeping their mouth clean more often made a big difference. So what we did not find though, um, we didn't find a big difference between the BMIs between the two groups. We didn't find a big difference between albumin, but the fact that the patients were able to do this protocol, um, they found it easy to do. It didn't have a gigantic impact on the way they're already doing oral care. Um, and they found it decreased their mouth pain and did prevent mouth sores for them. So that in itself was a big uh, win for us, we thought, for patients and for bedside nurses being able to do that kind of teaching. Even, even just to get them to recognize this is something they can do and not dread it with everything else they have going on, mm -hmm. that's a significant finding on its own. Yeah, it was. And, and the patients that we've, I've seen several of the patients since then, and they're still doing it. And that's not part of our research, but that's just anecdotal. I have seen several of them and they are still doing it and they're really very happy with it. So um, we felt like that was a simple enough, specific protocol that bedside nurses could easily remember, easy to teach, easy for patients, they don't feel overwhelmed. And perhaps using this type of protocol patients may not need to have another prescription to treat the mouth sores. Um, the, all the side effects that may go with that, that this may be something very simple, very organic that they can just do that's just good, good mouth care. Colleen Bass, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you Appreciate very much. sharing your findings. Thank you. Colleen Bass from the Christ Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio.